obviously there's other opportunities for change than just weight loss. Uh, and I'm curious if you have delved into, uh, you know, a couple things that people are always looking for, it seems on a daily basis in today's society is more energy and more happiness. <laughs> and I have noticed that for me specifically, the higher whole food carbohydrate I eat, my happiness meter goes up, up, and I have more energy that lasts throughout the day. I'm curious about how our brains work because some of that energy is, um, you know, is it's, it's created by the fact that I am happy and excited and 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 bouncing, and then I want to go out and energy, and I want to run, and I, you know, it's it's like all connected clearly. So for brain health, I know when I would bonk on the bicycle as I was training as a professional, which happened way more often in the early years because you learn <laughs> what to take with you on the bike. Um, that was just a, a a massive drop in my blood sugar. And it would always take a carbohydrate to, to, to try to reverse the bonk. Although, so what do our brains mostly run off of? I've always thought it was mostly carbohydrates. So do our brains run off of fat at all? So they don't unless, I mean, this is a very interesting day to ask because there's a, a media generated study about the keto diet and brain health right now, but it's not the day-to-day -day brain, it's mental health issues. So the brain will, the brain and the central nervous system prioritize glucose and stay, take, take one step back from that. All your muscles, everything else burns a combination of glucose and fat. It's really good at that. So if you're going to be running a marathon, I'm sure if you're doing long bike rides, you're going to burn a lot of fat. If you're going to do continuous exercise over time, we have sort of unlimited storage of fat that kicks in when the glucose runs out. But when the motor's running best, it's usually the glucose and fat that it's burning together. Yeah. But your brain and your central nervous system don't take up fatty acids. So those are long molecules. So those are carbon chains of four to let's say 26 carbons. They don't like that. When they're taking up glucose, that's six carbons. And they actually really would rather have three carbons. When the fatty acids do break down, they make two carbon units and can be put back together as ketones. And the brain can take up ketones, but its preference and the central nervous system is glucose, and that's from carbs. You can't, by the way, you can make fat out of carb, but you can't make carbs out of fat. There's like a cool little three carbon rule here. So if you had three carbons, you can put two three carbon things together and make a six carbon glucose, um, but fats always break down into two units. They don't break down into three carbs. They break down into two carbs. So if you're Starting to break down fats and your Krebs cycle, the one that burns the, the fat and glucose together, is being stopped by the shortage of glucose. That's how come they make ketones. So the brains will take up ketones because those are usually four carbons. And the brain will take up glucose, that's six carbons. But so much of our energy is stored as fatty acids and it doesn't like those really long chain carbons and doesn't take them up. When you talk about... Uh, just to stay on this one one more question, when you talk about healthy foods and that uh, that's the most important factor in terms of someone who wants to lose weight, for example, we already know that would be an important factor in terms of somebody's uh, numbers and their and their blood markers. But <laughs> except for SlimFast, wouldn't know that <laughs> lose a lot of weight. <laughs> well, that's healthy. that's what I wanted to I mean, ask: is if yeah. you if you isocalorically measure, meaning, I don't know if I use that term right, but if you use the same amount of calories and someone ate uh, an unhealthy diet, and then you gave them the same amount of calories on a healthy diet, would they lose the same amount of weight? Or does the high quality of the food make a difference? Or is it just that when you eat crap, it's so concentrated, you end up wanting to eat more and more and you eat more calories in that day? Yeah, so the, the isocaloric part of your question is important. So you, if you forced it to be isocaloric, the, I predict the weight change would be quite similar. So, but if you, if you see how hungry that makes you during that meal and later in the day, 
that's where it starts to balance out. If you're not satiated, then maybe that meal you ate that much, but later you eat more and it undermines the effort that you took. And so this is really, it's a fascinating point um, because scientifically, you know, there's a whole group out there that wants you to be very isolationist and reductionist and do one variable at a time, and that's isocaloric. And in my world, I call that efficacy. This is like, if everything was controlled, it would work this way. And then if you take it out in the real world and people can't do it, that's called effectiveness. And it's like, oh, but you did, they weren't eating what they were supposed to. Well, that's important. They didn't like it. It didn't taste good. It wasn't satiating. They couldn't find it to buy it. You can't make recommendations to the public that they can't follow. So those are very important criticism or, or issues to take up separately. And I, I wish it was less polarizing and it didn't create so much controversy because really you said, oh, cool, here's the isocaloric perspective. And here's the free living, not calorie match perspective. How interesting that they both offer insight into the question as opposed to one's right and one's wrong. No, they're both interesting ways to look at these questions.